Bryce and the Vacuum are Sarah J Maas's most iconic duo to date. Another video, another start of me laying on my floor because I still do not have a couch. Anyways, I read Akatar and the Throne of Glass series last year and loved both of them. And I have the big boy, Crescent City, House of Earth and Blood to read. I'm so excited. I do have high expectations because I absolutely loved Akatar and Throne of Glass. And I'm very excited for this. I have heard that the first like 100 to 200 pages is a doozy. So not looking forward to that, but I can't wait to dive in. So let's just roll with it. Okay, why do I get the feeling that Danica is going to die? I'm only on chapter three. This book is taking me forever to read so far. I'm like, I feel like I'm reading it the slowest I've ever read. It's a lot of information, a lot of people, a lot of places, a lot of like orders, and it's just a lot. Something's got, I feel like Danica's dying or something bad is happening to Danica. Am I right? The signs are there. What the hell? This book went from me almost being to the point where I'm like, if this was not Sarah J Moss, I would consider DNFing this book because I just was like this, this first 50 pages is boring as hell. So now all of the wolves in that pack being dead and Danica's dead, we are 60 pages into this. 60, well 61. And they're just all dead now? What the fuck? I did predict that Danica was going to die, but I did not think her entire wolf pack. God damn. Let's get this show moving. Where's Hunt at? I'm ready for him. Okay, so we immediately get those deaths. And then right after, now we get Hunt showing up. That, I mean, that's the only thing that I knew going into this book was like Bryce and Hunt. So I'm not going to try to get too attached to him because we all know how Sarah J Moss does her first love interests. But I know a lot of people really like Hunt, so I'm intrigued. And she already just described him with, like, unnatural stillness and that he's the shadow of death. That's his nickname and that he has, like, a skull helmet and my heart is already going pitter-patter. Oh my god, uh, Hunt stapling up Bryce's leg. Does that not remind you of Christina? Does it, or does it Owen? Like, Owen staple guns his own thigh together and then he like stitches up Christina or something or Christina stitches up Owen and his thigh and Grey's Anatomy anyone else immediately think of that I'm now on page 217 chapter 20 I don't even know when I last updated honestly but thoughts so far still there's just so many people so many names so many hierarchies and rankings and histories and groups of people to keep track of. It's just, it's a lot still to keep track of. And I'm really relying on one of my friends to answer my questions whenever they come up. It was revealed that Bryce's dad is the Autumn King. And I remember when I read that, I'm like, am I supposed to be shocked? because I wasn't really. I was like, I don't really even remember who this dude is supposed to be. And like, I'm assuming he's important because he's king, but does he like rule over Crescent City? Like, how does that work? I just don't really get kind of how the whole system works right now. And I know that's going to come the more that I read. When I'm like a quarter of the way through the book, I feel like I should at least have a somewhat basic understanding of it and I still feel kind of shaky on that. Maybe I'm the stupid one. I mean that's probably the most likely scenario here. I'm loving Bryce. I think she's great. She's such a fun main character and I'm really loving Hunt. He's giving me very similar like Rowan vibes for some reason like very serious. Um, Just thinks that Bryce is like a complete idiot at first. <laughs> just is like, why am I stuck with her? That like feels very reminiscent of Rowan and Aelin and Air of Fire. So I'm loving that. And I just think they are going to be explosive together. And I cannot wait to see it. I'm really vibing with Isaiah and Rune. I think that's how you say his name. Bryce's half-brother. I like him. He seems cool. More Faye. We love it. Um, And Bryce and Hunt just had a run-in with the Viper Queen. And I thought she seemed cool. 
So I kind of hope she makes another appearance again because she seemed kind of fun. So overall, I'm getting more into it. Once I got past the first part, I have been more motivated to read it. But it's still not like completely all encompassing to me yet. I swear one of my favorite underrated like random tropes is in a book when one of the characters sees the other character's scars and they have a moment of realization of just being like oh shit this person's been through some stuff and I don't know just does something for me it works like Aelin and Rowan in Air of Fire when Rowan sees Aelin's back or Juliet and Aaron Warner in the Shatter Me series, and now in this with Bryce and Hunt, how Hunt now realizes that Bryce never got her scar removed off of her leg. And then when she's limping, it's not because of her shoes, it's because of the scar. And I'm just like, yes. And he has that moment of like compassion for her. Just starting to see her more as a person instead of just like this. I don't know, this like party girl that doesn't care about anything and that he thought was a suspect for a while. And I just, I'm really liking the progression in their relationship. Also the club bombing came out of nowhere. All right, I just finished part two, so I'm on part three. I'm liking the plot, I'm getting more used to the world and the creatures in it and kind of the systems in play. Still don't give me a quiz on it because I will probably fail it, but I do feel like I'm getting more of a basic understanding. I'm liking that we're getting more backstory about Hunt and the rebellion and how I'm pretty sure he was like in love with the angel that he wanted to rebel for. And that her sister, Sandriel, I think is how you say her name, that he does not like her, not a fan of her, and that he was her slave at one point, I think. So I kind of like that we're getting more into that history. I like that we're getting a little more into Bryce, but not a ton. We're just getting more of her personality, but we aren't really getting a ton more backstory. We've got a bit of her in Rune, which I like. I like him a lot. Danica's just still such a presence in the book without being in the book at all, which I find interesting and makes me think that like, is she actually dead? I don't know. I just feel like for her to literally still be, so, I mean, I get that it's such a big deal because they're trying to solve her murder. I don't know. I might sound really stupid for thinking that she might possibly not be dead. And I think I made a snap judgment. At first, I thought that Hunt was giving me like a lot of Rowan vibes at the early beginning. Like he was just really brooding. He was really being an asshole. But Hunt seems like a genuine fun guy. Like, you know, I feel like if he was a real life dude, he'd be someone that you could like hang out with. Where I love Rowan, don't get me wrong. But do I want to like crack a beer and watch a movie with Rowan? No. I mean, like, yes, but no, like Hunt, Hunt is just more of a vibe. He's just, he just seems like a fun guy. And I kind of like that he is more, a little more lighthearted and that him and Bryce have a little bit more of like a lighthearted relationship. It's just kind of cool, kind of different, different from what I thought it was going to be. So we already knew that Sabine was a shady bitch and that we did not like her. We did not respect her. Slut shaming Bryce, we're just not on board with that. But now to find out that she may be involved somehow, maybe, potentially, not surprising. Not surprising if you ask me. Okay, here's one of the things that I just really love about Sarah J Moss's writing in terms of her characters that I feel like is really underrated. And it has to do with characters simply having regular ass conversations that don't really have anything to do with the overarching plot, that don't really do anything to progress the story forward, but just short, like one page conversations that reveal a lot about who the characters are just for fun and just to help build the relationship and build the character. Like Bryce and Hunt just had a little conversation and a little moment talking about these little unicorns that Bryce keeps stored in her closet, these toys from when she was a little kid and Hunt was snooping around and found them. Bryce shares this story about like how she was accepted when she had these and played with these and blah, blah, blah. And is it doing anything to the story? No, but it does something for these characters, for the two of them together and for Bryce herself. And it's things like that, they're short, they don't need to go on for a long time, but I feel like they make a world of difference for characters, especially for me as someone who is such a character-driven reader 
that I just, I really love and appreciate in her writing. So my couch finally came in. So I finally have a new place to read. Thank God, I'm so excited. So then I don't have to like either sit at my dining room table or sit in bed and read because that's not good for my back to constantly be like hunched over in bed. Just as Bryce and Hunt were like having a little moment and I thought that like, you know, they might embrace, they might kiss, even like, oh, say what? Out of nowhere, the Cristalos just whoops in, attacks Hunt, attacks Bryce, or kind of doesn't really attack Bryce, but attacks Hunt mostly, and they kill it together. I love a moment of peril when like our characters go through a little moment where like they think they might die or they're under attack, because then the aftermath of that is always just like chef's kiss. So then Bryce and Hunt were just like after like everything they cleaned up, they talked to people, whatever. Then a little bit later, they again are having a moment and again, they are about to kiss and then fucking Sabine shows up. I hate Sabine. She shows up and all she says is like, back the fuck up and I'm like, excuse me. I don't know what your problem is today. I feel like finally things are starting to happen now. For a while, it just felt like all they were doing was investigating and like world building and it, it was just slow. Where now within the last like, 20 or so pages i feel like things are finally picking up and i'm really enjoying that my phone is plugged in so it can't reach any farther than this so enjoy this really awkward angle hi on page 453 and sabine hunt and bryce are all like confronting each other i started getting an inkling like a few chapters back thinking like the more that i was thinking about it i'm like it really doesn't make any sense that Sabine would have killed Danica. I mean, like, yeah, it kind of would have, but I just feel like that would be too easy. When we still have, like, halfway through this book to go, to already have it in our minds that it's Sabine, like, that, it just doesn't seem right to me. And now that they're all talking, I'm like, yeah, I really don't think Sabine was involved, uh, at least in her, like, direct death or anything. I don't think she's the one summoning the demon. I'm almost wondering if it's Micah. Again, I suck at predicting things, so I could be completely off on this. I am living for Adidas, Adios. It looks like Adidas without the extra D in it, but the like demon prince from the fifth ring of hell or whatever, they just summoned him. A fun, a fun little banter session. And I would love to get more of him. And I hope that he comes back around more in the future because I really enjoyed his little vibe that he had going. I'm on chapter 62. The main thing I want to say is if Bryce and Hunt are not endgame, I don't want it. I just, I love the two of them together. They just make such a great team. Bryce had the venom extracted from her leg and that entire scene got me. And then a few scenes before that, when Bryce had got the chocolate croissants for Danica's birthday, and then Amelia, Amelia, is that her name? I think one of the wolves had written like trash on it and then Hunt tracked her down and pinned her to the wall. I've said this before and I'll say it again. I love the cold rage that Sarah J Moss always has and her like male protagonists when they get really pissed off, they get like really still, like dead ass serious. Like it's not like explosive rage, it's like cold fury. And I just love that for some reason. I find that so much more like powerful than like an explosive rage. I'm really, really liking this now. I just feel like there's so much to accomplish still, but I have to keep reminding myself that this is literally the first book in a series. I'm very suspicious of Micah. I think he's shady. I also think like the Viper Queen has to come back into play somehow. And also this Medwitch that we keep seeing we have never gotten her name, and I am curious about that and a little sus on her as well. Hunt's wings getting cut off. Sabine. That's all I gotta say. That was brutal. Hunt, why? Why? I'm so annoyed with him. So annoyed with him. I was so distracted in that chapter by Hunt that I didn't even comment on Danica's deal until I got a few pages in again. So Danica really just killed herself and the whole pack because of the drug. Like, that makes sense. But also, like, 
it's just hard to believe that no one else really was involved. I don't know how I feel about that yet. I need to sit on it, I guess. There is so much that has happened. I literally don't even know how to comprehend any of it. So Micah's a shady, shady motherfucker. I mean, I started to suspect him a while ago and now hearing it all come out, it totally makes sense. I didn't get the whole like Danica Although, so technically Danica did kill the pack, but not like because she just took a drug and went crazy. It just feels better. Like the story feels right with this confession. But I just feel like there's so much talk of other worlds and opening other porters, portals that if SJM does not do a crossover with this world, Throne of Glass, and Akatar, she's really missing out. Um, And I swear to God, if syrinx i don't even know if that's how you say it right but bryce's pet whatever it is but if that creature in the tank eats her pet i'm done i can't handle any pet any uh pet trauma i just i can't deal with bryce is a fucking badass the way she just annihilated micah and then just vacuumed him up Petty, petty as fuck, and I love it. I did shed a few tears at Lebha. Again, I can't say any of these fucking names. Of her sacrificing herself for Bryce and Srinx, Srinx, whatever. I mean, we know it's not a reading vlog if I don't cry. Bryce's phone call to Hunt with all of her goodbyes. Stop 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 and her and e ethan showing up and fighting for her oh my god i i can't i can't this is gonna be like the most <sighs> informal wrap up ever but i finished crescent city a couple of nights ago i've been meaning to like film a wrap up with my final thoughts because i did a really bad job within the last like 100 pages of cataloging my thoughts like i had along the way Mostly because there was just like so much happening and I didn't want to stop. I've had a few days to like digest this. Um, anyway, so I've had time to... <laughs> you want to join in? I've had time to kind of digest this and let's just kind of wrap up my final thoughts on this book. First things first, Bryce and the Vacuum are Sarah J Maas's most iconic duo to date. Aelin and Rowan who? Reese and Feyre who don't know them all I know is that Bryce and a vacuum best fucking duo there ever was I cried a, I cried a lot at the end of this book um starting with Lebaha's okay this is the thing with this book I can't pronounce any of the names I Bryce and Hunter it everyone else's names I'm probably pronouncing wrong Sarah J Moss you always create like weird ass character names I'm sorry so if I mispronounce any of them, don't come at me. It really doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. So Lebaha, her sacrifice to save Bryce and give her time to get away and get upstairs and her repeating over and over again, like my friends are behind me and I will not be afraid. It was very like Sam Corlin-esque from Assassin's Blade and I was just loving it. It definitely made me cry. Like this little spirit doing so much for this story and these people. The whole situation with Micah, I thought Micah was sus from the start. I mean, obviously anyone who is commanding Hunt to go and kill, do a kill for a kill, it's just like, you know he's not a good dude. I was suspicious too of the fact that he was attacked that night because that made me think like, did he have something to do with it? And then he like maybe got himself attacked in a way to like, deflect any suspicion or something and obviously it paid off and I was right on that I was right on one thing and Bryce's final showdown with him was incredible incredible first of all just Bryce is such a badass and for not having any powers really at this point I mean granted we'll get to the end of the book but her shooting him and then chopping him in half, chopping him into pieces, burning him and then vacuuming him up. Like the greatest demolition of a character I've ever read. <laughs> It was so entertaining and so good. And then I was loving that we were getting the meeting going at the same time, the summit, at the same time watching Bryce and kind of seeing that 
through their lens and seeing Hunt react to it and Rune and the Autumn King and Jessica. Jessica, I'm still suspicious of, especially after the last chapter of her and Adius. But I think that there's something there with the two of them and especially they made a comment about Hunt's dad. So I'm really interested to learn more about Hunt's heritage in the next book because now we've kind of covered Bryce's in this one. Bryce going out on her own and being like a badass racing through the city while everyone else was holding up. I was like, yes, she's very reminiscent of Reese and Aelin in that way of that she has a self-sacrificial nature, which I mean, join the SJM club of that. I like that trait, honestly. It really does not bother me. I know some people get kind of sick of that, of characters always trying to sacrifice themselves for the greater good, but I'm always kind of a sucker for that, especially in a hero. I feel like that's an important trait to have. The wolf pack came to support her and Ethan brought them all. Oh my God, I screamed because I really wanted reconciliation between Bryce and the wolf pack because at the beginning, like she's so close with them and they are like her family. And then after Danica and the pack's murder, how they just completely shunned her out of everything was really hard. So I like that we got that. I mean, there's definitely a lot of progress to be made still in future books, but I definitely like that we got at least a start on that. This is my thing right now. I don't, I really don't fucking want a switcheroo in love interests that SJM is known for because obviously if you read the Throne of Glass series by book three things change and if you've read Akatar by book two things change and in both of those cases I didn't mind because I really love them and maybe if she does do it I'll look back and be like oh yeah that makes sense but I really don't want anyone but Bryce and Hunt to be together in this I don't want Bryce with anyone else and I don't want Hunt with anyone else However, if she does pull a switch, I do see some like, I could see some things being planted between potentially Hunt and Naomi and maybe like Bryce and Ethan or even Bryce and the Prince of the Underworld. Like, I don't know. I really hope not because I feel like they had kind of like their Air of Fire, Mist and, Mist and Fury journey together in this book. So I really hope that that solidifies them moving forward. But just the thing for this is, is that there was just really not that much like romance in it. I mean, yes, there was like sexual tension in it, but there was not a lot of them being a couple. It was just really them being like great friends, like really great partners and really helping each other through things, which is why if she pulls a fast one, I like wouldn't be surprised. But also, or well, I would kind of be surprised because I think a lot of people really love them together. I do kind of see then too, maybe she did that so that way in the next book they can explore like their romantic relationship more. I don't know. So I really hope that Bryce and Hunt though are endgame in the rest of this series because the two of them, their journeys together in this book, I thought was just like classic SJM pairing. And I just... I enjoyed the absolute shit out of it. I don't know if I've covered this, but then when Bryce got sold back to Shahir, or no, Sandriel, that's, Shahir was the sister. Sandriel, fuck that. Oh my God, we didn't even talk about him. Oh my God, oh my God, how did I forget about that? The witch queen who then took off, like freed Hunt and burned off his, or not like burned off, but like incinerated his tattoos or whatever. So then Hunt got his full power back. And then when he went after Sandriel and fried her from the inside out, oh my God, that was so satisfying. So satisfying to watch. I was so happy for Hunt to get that moment. And like, I was like cheering. I was so excited for that. I just really fucking love Hunt as a character. I was so wrong on him in the beginning. He's such a great sense of humor and he's a lot more lighthearted. And yes, he has those really like hard, dark, serious moments, but he's just a really, he's a really interesting character. He's just nothing like how I thought he was going to be from the start. And he really pleasantly surprised me. I loved him getting to zippy zap. Sandriel. I was waiting for the drop. I'm like, Bryce has to make it in this book. There's been so much talk about it. She definitely has to make it. And I was hoping and thinking that Hunt was going to be her anchor. This ended up being so much cooler with Danica being able to come back and her like dredging up the last of her energy to get over to this like platform to call on someone to come and anchor her so she could make it. <gasps> so fucking cool. And then Danica shows up and I was crying because of Danica showing up. Dropping the journey that Bryce and her are making together. It was just, 
incredible. It was so well done and completely like blew my expectations for that scene out of the water. And especially how you can see like Rune and everyone watching it and uncovering her power, how she has like the power of light and that all coming to life. It was just a really satisfying uh, kind of like wrap up to that storyline. Okay, so future books, I'm so excited now for these next books. What's gonna happen with Bryson Hunt? Like I need to know right now. I'm so invested in this world now. It took me a long time to get into the world building and this is dense and it just, it took me a long time and still I don't necessarily feel like I have the greatest understanding of this world, but I can't wait to explore more of it. And I just, I really love these characters. This is the thing about SJM's books that I am really drawn to is the characters. Yes, like the plot's great, world building's cool, like magic, fae, I love all of that. But really, truly, it's the characters in these. And Bryce and Hunt are so well fleshed out in this book, especially Bryce and the image that she puts out for other people as a defense mechanism in her grief. I think the mental health writing in her books is just incredible. And I feel that in Bryce in dealing with her grief. And I don't really think I have anything else to say. That's it for this reading vlog. Let's see, next I'm going to have, I think like my favorite Kindle Unlimited reads coming up soon. And then I have some other reading vlogs that I've been working on that will be coming soon. I don't really ever have a schedule for anything, so they will be up when they'll be up. I'll see you when I see you.